Holy shit, it's early. Don't know if you can even see me, but I think it's 3.45 in the morning. Out here at the bottom of my driveway waiting for my Uber to come get me. On my way to the airport to catch a flight to Seattle. Um, adventure begins right now. Guys, just landed in Seattle. We made it too, and we just got to Auburn Municipal Airport, which is where the airplane is at. We're waiting for the current owner to get here. I don't see the plane yet, but um, there is some cool airplanes here, man. Beautiful There's airport. So many of them. Yeah, so many airplanes. So, yep, waiting for uh, current owner to get here, and then it's time to buy an airplane. Whoa, 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 whiskey, yeah. Yeah, that was good. 1966 Mooney M20E. Whenever I go to do anything major, purchases, big decisions, I get like nauseous and I'm starting to feel nauseous, but we're gonna go through with that. Okay, paperwork done. That's Vince, the old owner now, because technically it is mine. At least still here, we can't get rid of him. <laughs> but that's it, technically I own the Mooney and uh, left, we gotta go up flying and that's really it. And we yeah. go out for dinner and fly home the next day, so. Congrats. Yeah, thanks man. Lee, say Woo. congrats to me. Congrats. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Check this out. This is a Mooney Aerostar. You can tell by the bulb on the top here and the little tail on the back. This is an Aspen. You can tell that it's an Aspen tree because of the way it is. The only Moonies that have that are the Aerostars. This is the Aerostar um, company bought Mooney, I think, for like only one year and built only a small handful of aircraft. So this is a really rare uh, Mooney right here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Cessna lame. <laughs> nice mall. This airport has a lot of cool airplanes. A lot. Looks so like we got a gear up landing here. I think it's a Comanche. Yes, it is a Comanche. Can't get around that way. But look at props bent. Gear is still up. And I bet. Um, I see some scrapes down the belly. Hasn't flown in a while. Oh yeah, not, not bad actually. Yeah, see this? It's supposed to go like that. Here's your problem right there. Here's your problem right there. This is what happens when your gear doesn't go down or you forget to put it down. But be it that there's grass stuck in here, I bet this gear didn't come down and you set it down in the grass. I wonder if it was a wow. sense. Could have been too. Yeah, and go off the end of the runway. No, like the, the, the note was Look it up, there's probably an NTSB report on it. Yeah, it's not looking. That sucks, man. Oh yeah, it's been a while since it's moved. Look at that though, autopilot, everything. Was a nice Comanche at one point. 
I mean, it's it's kind of the logical thing, right? But I'll I'll get in, move the passenger seat forward, the person in back gets in, move the seat back, and then the front passenger gets in. Out. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Pre-flight's done. Went over his pre-flight techniques, ins and outs. Now, test flight. Okay, guys. So we are back home, um, and just want to fill the gap here between our travel day and the first day of our actual trip coming back home. So um, we didn't record it, but the end of that day ended with us just flying around uh, the Seattle area, probably about a one hour flight. Um, did some pattern work, went over all the ins and outs of the airplane, the little quirks that the airplane had. Um, practice putting up and down the gear, because if you're not aware, the, uh, the M20Es, the 1966, um, has uh, Johnson bar, so the gear is fully manual. So we did we did some practice on that. Um, everything went great. The plane ran great. Uh, went over all the paperwork, make sure we had all our aero documents so that we were legal. Um, and then got some food, went back to the hotel, and went to sleep. So yeah, we'll just jump right into the next day, which is day one of our trip home from Seattle all the way to Charleston. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay, beginning of day one. Um, weather looks pretty good. Cloud cover, I think overcast at 10,000. A little bit of rain, but uh, it's not gonna stop us. And low winds and no turbulence over the mountains reported right now. So first leg is the most concerning because it is over the mountains. Um, but after that, we should be in good shape. So yeah, and now it is starting to rain as I'm saying this. So I guess we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Morning, Lee. Morning. We got to fit. All of this. Ugh, wait, there's more. That's gotta go in there. Let's get started. Okay, so we have an idea of what all this weighs, but we actually have to weigh it. Make sure our weight and balance is in. Lee brought his handy dandy <laughs> scale. El Cheapo scale. Um, luckily we're not full of fuel, so if we're a little heavy, we can not fill it up, but we, we don't want to do that. All right. All right, bag. 13. 13. We got a winner. <laughs> uh, can you jot this down? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm trying to film Lee. I can remember 13 and then get some footage here and then 17 13 17 so we're at 30 that's pretty easy 24 30 plus 25 55 Lee's night bag gotta bring your night bag and in and, 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 oh, and a and, day bag no and the travel john travel john oh, very important be component <laughs> is seven pounds seven yep seven bushes uh -uh. don't forget this one and this one seven bushes seven bushes so we're at 60 uh two it would, it would kind of need to keep track of what's going where though yeah that's a good point all right we'll be back look at that fit right <laughs> coming from a cessna 150 well the 150 had a decent baggage area but this is nice that's like perfect for two bags and some other and stuff. And some stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hat rack's got all the uh, soft stuff on it, some manuals. Oh, I'm jumping in front of you. You're good. So, yeah, man, it's working out. <laughs> Let's, let me see that thing. That it's, nice. it's from fucking Sporties. It's... Yeah, a little nice scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so weight and balance update. We are, what, about almost uh, 80, 90 pounds under gross, even with full fuel. So, we're good. We're not gonna gain any more weight on the way there. We're not bringing anything else. <laughs> uh, so we don't have to do this again. We don't have to do it again. We might even lose weight because I have been having some trouble. Um, but yeah, I think we are good. So now load up. I got to go update GPS databases. We'll go do that real quick. And then uh, we're getting in the air. So see you guys. <laughs> you want some help or you want me to keep filming? <laughs> <laughs> 100, 200, 300. The Cessna, it was really hard to uh, see when it was about to scroll over the wind. High wind suck? No, it takes Yeah, that's another thing. This is really nice. Am I having to climb on the airplane? <laughs> yeah, no ladder necessary. No ladder. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> okay, Greek light is done. Um, plane's fueled up. We are just trying to find a computer to update our, our GPS. We need to download an app for it from Garmin and my work computer will not let me install things without administrative approval from my company. So that was the computer I brought, unfortunately. So looking for a computer and once we update the GPS, we're good to go. Gorgeous day here in Auburn, Washington. So this was a nightmare. <laughs> We've been in here for 30 minutes <laughs> trying to update the GPS. And we don't even know how we got it to work, but it seems to be working at this <laughs> Some point. Voodoo magic. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The lovely folks here at Spayware. Is that what it is? Spanflight. Span. That's you were used for. Spanflight. Yeah. Hooked us up with some quart of oil just in case. Yes, sir. And, safe uh, flight. Safe flight. Yeah. It's gonna be good. Thanks, man. No problem. All right, guys. Well, we are just getting going here. Auburn traffic to now the two seven two untangled at Auburn downwind uh, number two three four. But Auburn. And um, yeah, it took us a little while to get in the air. We had to fix a bunch of stuff, including the GPS. We had to update all the databases, but we got that done. Um, and the plan now is just get in the air, and then we'll call for our IFR clearance, and we're heading out. 2,000. Okay, suction's good. Albany, Check your mags. Two left. Two right. Go two to the right. Huh? That's both of them. One left. One right. Yeah, Max, good. Yeah. Uh, do your propeller check. Auburn traffic, Menezes, 272, untangled, turn to left face, runway uh, 34, Auburn. RPM, okay, manifold pressure, go ahead. Yep, and then oil pressure. Yep. And then throttle slowly close to 1,000. Uh, before takeoff, flight controls, check them. Auburn traffic, Menezes, 272, untangled, turn to final, runway 34, for full stop, Auburn. Three full and correct, looks like, okay. Altimeter, we set that. Directional gyro still set for one. Yep, yeah, that's good. How, how do you, how are you verifying that? I'm looking at this. Oh, okay, yeah. I got this it. is not slaved, so you, this is like a regular DG. It yeah, will, it will, it'll, it'll I haven't played a regular DG since 2002. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you can also, you got your heading bug set for 3-4 already. That's nice. Uh, temp's up. Uh, sonar temp is good. Okay, good. Uh, clock set and wind. Electrical fuel pump on. We'll turn that on when we, we're getting ready to go. Trim set for takeoff, confirmed. Flap set for takeoff, so I'll show you how to do that if you don't remember. Yep, down, down. and two pumps. And by the way, full is going to be four and a half, so never go to four and a half because then it kind of sticks out. So four okay. is full. Retraction lever, check for clearance. Nothing down there? Yep. Okay. Then take off, you're going to power, friction lock, make sure you want to rotate at 65 on this. And then climb at 80 and initially. Climb, climb at 80 initially. Then gear. Once you get to 80, the gear, and then you pitch forward for 100. Okay, and that's all we got. We're all ready for takeoff, buddy. And you got your landing light, too. Don't forget, that's right here. Auburn traffic, Mooney, 2711 Whiskey, taking off 3-4, Auburn. Mm -hmm. Auburn traffic, system, April Montelli, X-ray, coming up. That feels like full. Yep. Engine instruments in the green. Yes, sir. RPM's good. Wait for 65. There it is. Right rudder, yep. Climbing out at about 80 miles per hour, right? Yeah, miles per hour. So look at your analog gauge. Yep. Down and down. Locked. Confirmed. Gears up. Okay, pitch to one. Don't forget, don't go over 100. Yep. Flaps coming up. Okay. Auburn traffic, Mini 1-1 one, one Whiskey, turning left, crosswind, 3-4 Auburn. Traffic. Yep, got it. Auburn traffic, number 60762, Louis, uh, comment 1,500, one mile to the east of the airport. If you cross the midfield, to do it on a teardrop for the 45, they'll left down with the 3-4 Auburn. Seattle approach, Mooney, 2711 Whiskey, just south of Auburn, 1,500 feet, looking to pick up our IFR to Helena, uh, Hotel Lima, November. Mooney, 2711 Whiskey, Seattle approach, IDEM. IDEM, 11 Whiskey. November 11 Whiskey, squawk 1634. 1634, 11 Whiskey. November 11 Whiskey, were you trying to pick up your IFR clearance? Yes, ma'am, that's a permanent for 1 1 Whiskey. November 1 1 Whiskey, Roger, can you maintain a VFR and climb westbound up to 5,000? Uh, 
Uh, yes, ma'am, westbound up to 5,000, one one whiskey. Uh, westbound, Bubba. November 1, Whiskey Correction, can you maintain your own train and obstruction clearance in a climb to 5,000 on a 020 heading? Uh, yeah, up to 5,000, we'll maintain our own clearance on a 020 one or uh, one one Whiskey. Number one on Whiskey, Roger, uh, traffic 2 o'clock in 2 miles, northwest on Austin, in case 2,100. Yeah, traffic sight, no factor. We got them in sight, no factor, one one Whiskey. November 1 on Whiskey, you're cleared to Hotel Lima, November Airport via radar director to VAMP. Climb and maintain at 4,000 and fly heading at 0, 40. All right, sir. Clear to Hotel Lima, November via radar vectors to VAMP. Uh, 4,000 on the altitude and 040 on the heading, 1 1 Whiskey. And thank God you're here. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, a lot of traffic around here. November 1 1 Whiskey, climb and maintain 5,000. Uh, 5,000, 1 1 Whiskey. American 2511, turn left direct, Normie. Uh, we might not be able to maintain VFR for too much longer, bro. November 1 1 Whiskey, climb maintain 6,000. 6,000, 1 1 Whiskey. And approach be advised, we won't be able to maintain uh, contact with the ground for much longer. November 1 1 Whiskey, uh, Roger, uh, you're, uh, I'm taking care of that for now. Thank you. We're cleared to 6. Uh, November 1, Whiskey, yeah. try and maintain 7,000, and you're officially IFR uh, since whenever I cleared you earlier. 7,000, and yeah, I just wanted to make sure. 1-1, one, one Whiskey. That's the thing. November 1 on Whiskey, try and maintain 1-1,000. 1,000, 1-1, one, one Whiskey. Cleared up to 11,000, and um, unfortunately it's foggy, and we, I wanted to see Mount Rainier, but it's out there. Hard to see. We were officially IFR, cleared up to our cruising altitude of 11,000. Like one, baby. going. All right, guys, well, we're in cruise right now anyway. I'm going to go ahead and save the camera batteries for our landing, and uh, we'll be back with you guys. Peace. Alright, so decided to stop at Grant County after, I don't know how long we flew, maybe only an hour. Um, but we're over the mountains now, so that was a big, big concern of ours. It's actually really smooth. I have very, very minor turbulence, if anything. We stumbled upon this place. There's like, gotta be a couple hundred 737s back here. These are all the 737 Maxes that were grounded and I guess not used after that for the uh, Boeing issue that they had, the two crashes with the 737 Max. Um, but there is a just, graveyard of 737s i mean they also have engines on them and everything there's also this 747 sitting back here and a bunch of firefighting aircraft over here behind me and then a couple t-38s over there this is a really wild airport pretty cool um so yeah leg one done and uh, no issues with the mooney definitely getting used to it still but we had a great landing nice job lee and uh everything went well so thank you grant county you served Lee well. Yeah, served me very well. <laughs> and, um, look at this, man. Look at that. Oh, uh, look at that. Look at that. Places you see. So uh, we don't even know if we're in Washington or Montana. We I don't... are. We are. I checked, actually. We're still in Washington. Okay, so not quite out of the state yet, but over the mountains. Let's get back in and keep going. We got a long way to go still.
guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. I had an awesome time making it. Um, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that jazz. We ended up actually making it all the way to Sioux Falls, Idaho on the first day. And on the second leg, I actually stumbled upon an airport um, that was shut down for having a drag race. And we got to do some pretty cool stuff while we were there. Uh, make sure to stay tuned for that video coming out, part two. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.